Spending more attributes to get the same exact badges, it's just crazy to me. In this video, we're gonna uncover the truth about red badges. We finna get into all the details. Y'all be sure to drop a like and drop a sub if you can. It's Load up that clip. Hey, what's good, y'all? I'm All City. As always, appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, y'all. So before we start, right off rip, I just want to let you guys know I did some comparisons between attributes and I found out that we're going to be paying more for attributes to get the same exact badges. I created this graphic to help show you guys how much more we're going to be paying for the same exact badge levels. We'll cover this in greater detail in just a second. I would like to share a brief rundown with you guys on how I even came to this point. For those who may not have heard, NBA 2K25 is introducing legend badges. A legend badge is going to be one level above the Hall of Fame level that a lot of us have become accustomed to with 2K games. And some of you guys may be wondering what are the requirements to get a legend badge. I'll quickly reference this post from Zach about legend badges. The question was, what are the attribute ratings needed to unlock legend badges? Zach Timmerman, he responds saying, all legend badges have at least one attribute requirement that is in the 90s. Most are 97, 98, and 99 very high the lowest is strong handles which requires a 93 strength as well as an 80 ball handle now if you come to learn how heavily monetized nba 2k games are you'd probably know that a lot of the functions within 2k especially introducing new gameplay functions they'll more than likely be designed into the game to encourage or persuade more spending but 2k always makes sure to let you guys know that it's really just your choice nobody's forcing you to spend i would like to reference this next post from wolf saying some more insight on 2k25 builder wolf says if you decide to go for legend badges in any particular category your build will suffer in other areas basically if you want to be specialized and elite at one or two things you'd be lackluster at a bunch of other things but alternatively you don't have to chase legend badges you can be a good well-rounded build with a few hall of fames a lot of gold and silver badges in all categories pretty much a balanced do it all type of build and 2k tells you ultimately it's your decision on how you want to play 2k25 and the truth is it is your decision until it's not these legend badges these red badges they're gonna entice you guys to want to shoot for the highest attributes a bunch of 2k players out there trying their darndest to be the best type of player which legend badge is gonna be op let's all race to find out now with that thought in mind what happens when 2k drops that first patch or for that matter the next 10 hotfixes you see 2k they don't have a track record of maintaining consistency throughout their gameplay in an annual cycle all too often the game released is something very different at the end of any 2k cycle Cycle. you pick and choose nba 2k24 was a prime example of that 2k24 does not look anything right now how it looked when it was released and now that brings us full circle back to red badges a new legend badge level being added to nba 2k25 designed to incentivize players who have higher attributes and ideally you don't see anything wrong with that. A lot of us 2K players are like, we should be incentivized if we have super high attributes on our build. But it isn't until you start looking at the numbers. And that's when you're like, hold on one second. You realize that there's a significant difference in the amount of attributes required to get a certain badge or increase his badge level. The comparisons I made here are for NBA 2K25's ankle assassin badge. And I compared that against the attribute requirements for the ankle breaker badge levels of NBA 2K24. Starting from top to bottom, in NBA 2K25, you guys will need a 75 ball handle attribute. And that's a significant change from NBA 2K24. That's 13 additional points that you'll need to add to your ball handle to get the same level. In NBA 2K24, you only needed a 62 ball handle. The same goes for the silver level. In NBA 2K25, you need an 86 ball handle. In NBA 2K24, you only needed a 75. That's an 11 point difference. At the gold level, 2K25 wants you to have a 93 ball handle, eight point difference. 2K24, you only needed an 85. And here's where things get a little funny. In NBA 2K25, to get the Hall of Fame badge level for Ankle Assassin, you would need a 95 ball handle. In NBA 2K24, you guys only needed a 93. That's a two point difference. Now take a look at the levels between Gold and Hall of Fame in the 2K25 panel. You guys will need a 93 to get Gold. Two additional points will get you to a 95. And only three additional points will get you to the Legend level. The difference between Gold and Hall of Fame is only five points. Whereas look at the spacing in attribute numbers 
in NBA 2K24. At the gold level, you would need an 85, but you guys would need eight additional points to get to the Hall of Fame level, where in 2K25, you only need two additional points. Now you guys see in the NBA 2K24 panel, the legend level is X'd out because we didn't have legend badges. But if we've replaced that with a 98, like we have in 2K25, there would be a 13 point difference between gold and legend. Whereas in 2K25, there is only a five point difference. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this if you guys are shooting for higher attributes on your bill chasing these legend badges 2k has way more control over you guys one hot fix or one patch could change the way your build plays think of it something like a high risk high reward type of build you're shooting for these high badges but yet you don't know anything about gameplay and least bit you don't even know if gameplay will stay consistent players who take the low risk safe type of route creating bills that have their attributes spread out those bills will be more likely to stand the test of time i'm thinking that these numbers are so close on the 2k25 panel between gold and legend there has to be a rhyme and reason as to why 2k decided to change the badge requirement format those players who chase high risk which a lot of 2k players like to do will more than likely be creating a bunch of new builds throughout the year just to keep up with the patches and hotfixes additionally something else that i noticed i think 2k feels that players were too complacent in their grind you see if players are able to animate with lower attribute requirements getting bronze at 62 getting silver at 75 gold at 85 they would be less inclined to spend their vc on upgrading their build whereas in nba 2k25 you're gonna need at the very least a 75 to start animating i imagine these new badge levels go hand in hand with the attribute requirements for certain animations which then in turn means that a lot more players will have to spend more quicker than they were in NBA 2K24. Basically saying in NBA 2K24, you were able to compete with less. Now, the intention for this video is to bring awareness, hoping that a lot more 2K players, they're just aware of these things when they're creating their build. Will these red badges, these new legend badges be effective? There's a very high possibility a lot of them will. I'm asking you guys to choose wisely. More importantly, if you're getting NBA 2K25, go out there, have some fun. If any of you guys are new here, want to stay up to date with the latest information on 2K25, drop a like, drop a sub on your way out. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys on the next video. If you guys are tired of running with randoms and you're looking for players to run with on NBA 2K, come on out and join the All City 2K Discord. The link will be in the description below. Find players and get runs now. Drop a like and drop a sub on your way out. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Easy, y'all.